Howdy there, my name is Leo Bellato, and today we're going to talk about signal flow. Are you all ready? Then let's flow it away. Okay, so what is signal flow? Let's start with an example. We have a lighting console and we would like to control the intensity of a light. Let's say we have an incandescent for now. And as we already know, we plug in incandescent lights into the dimmer. Well, from the lighting console, we will connect a DMX cable from it to the dimmer. And from the dimmer, we will plug in our light. Now, what is this DMX we've been talking about? What are you talking about? Well, that is just a protocol so we can control the lights. They can also control foggers, intelligent lights, and even some Christmas lights. Great! And with that DMX protocol, we can carry 512 channels. And those 512 channels of DMX, we can then call it a universe. So universe one will consist of 512 channels, meaning that a second universe would need another DMX cable. In general, you can have up to 32 lights into one DMX stream. So now let's add some more lights into our signal flow, shall we? We shall. We have the lighting console going from universe one to the dimmer. And from the dimmer, we go to the Fresnel. Now we have another light, an LED one, which will be the LED part quad 12. So now we can actually go from the dimmer to the LED light and you're almost good to go. And I just wanted to point out here that this light coming from the dimmer, okay, we're plugging in a DMX cable from it. So that dimmer that you can see on the picture, it's got a um, DMX in and a DMX out. Okay, just so, so you understand why it's coming from the dimmer, because we're using only one DMX stream. So we're going from the lighting console into the dimmer, and then the dimmer is working as a bypass from the dimmer into an LED light. I hope uh, this makes sense, okay? Um, and remember, you're connecting the DMX cable. The incandescent lights that you're plugging into the dimmer you're just plugging in the power from it into it. Let's say we add a second LED light. Then we go from the first LED light, as you can see here. Or we could just adjust the signal flow and use the universe to from the lighting console and then go to the LED light. Now, in order for you to control all of those LED lights, we have to make sure that the address and the channel mode are both matching with what we have in our lighting console. Uh, for example, this LED light in particular can run four, five, or 10 different channel modes. So let's say we choose channel mode 10. Now, this light will take 10 channels from our DMX chain. So now let's choose a number. Let's say we choose the number 30. So now we have to ensure that the address on the light is showing number 30. And if on the universe 2, then universe 2.030. So they can communicate with each other. If it is on universe 1, then it will be 1.030. Now the second LED light will have an address number of 40 because the first one is already taking those 10 channels. If we chose number 31, for example, then the second one would be 41. 
and also, so right after 41, so the next one, the third light, would be 51, then 61, then 71, and so forth. So the more channels a light has, the more things you can do and control. In case of an incandescent light, all you can do is to dim them, and that is about it. So they will only take one channel, and the lighting console will communicate with the dimmer via the DMX connection. So the dimmer can then send some juice to the incandescent lights. In general, most dimmers have 12 channels, so you can do 12 incandescent lights per dimmer. Now, can you actually plug in two of your incandescent lights into one channel? Well, that depends. But in general, yes. But now that means that if you bring up the fader for that particular channel, it's going to bring up both those lights at the same time. So keep that in mind. I personally like to leave all of the dimmable lights from 1 to 12 or from 1 to 24 or in banks of 12. And all the rest of the lights, then I start them from 13 or 25 and so forth. This makes it easier for you when you're patching them in. So with our LED Parkwood 12, those 10 channels will have different attributes, such as colors like red, green, blue, intensity, strobe, and so forth. That is why it is important to have a gear list, as well as with all of the necessary information so you know beforehand what their addresses and modes are going to be. So back to our signal flow. Yay! Instead of having the actual pictures of the equipment, which might take a lot of space, I prefer to use shaped objects instead, as you can see here. So what we had before will be like this. Now we only have been doing the signal flow and not power. So I'm going to include a power flow so you also know where they're going to. And as far as signal flow goes, it is very important to color code them so you can distinguish them better from one another. So I use red for power and blue for signal. It is very important to add some sort of footnote so people know exactly what they mean. Alrighty, let me break it down for you now. So as you can see here, the green box represents our lighting console. And now we want to run the signal in order for it to communicate with everything else. So we run a DMX cable, which is represented by our blue line, then run it out to our dimmer. Now in order for the dimmer to talk to the incandescent light, we simply plug in the light's power cable into the dimmer. And as you can see here, we plug it into socket number one. So after the console is patched in, and you bring fader number one up, along with your master fader, it will bring up the intensity of that light. Okay, so now we want to communicate with our LED quad pars. And so we'll use Universe 2 and run a second DMX cable from the console to the LED uh, quad par. Now this is very, very important, y'all. You should have the male end coming from your lighting console and the female end going to the light. Please make sure you run the cables the right way. So now, so now that DMX is plugged into the first LED quad par, we can then go from the out of the LED quad par into the second LED quad par via a DMX cable. <clears throat> Great! That is our signal done. Now with the power, we will plug in our console into the three-phase distro, so the power cable represents the red line in this diagram. And we will be plugging into 
Um, socket number nine, which is the third phase of the distro. Now let's do our part quad 12. One is going to be going to number one, and the other one is going to be going to number two. Therefore, using phase number one. Now, I would like to note that the purple line that you can see on top is just the power connection that comes with the light itself. So you're basically getting power and signal from the dimmer at the same time. It basically sends voltage to the light to increase its heat and produce light. So after plugging in all of your power, then we can plug in the dimmer into the three-phase power socket and we can plug in the three-phase distro into the three-phase power. Okay? And there we go. That is our whole uh, signal flow as well as power flow. Now here's a couple of pictures I have included to help you when you're drawing your own signal flow. In general, that is what we use for incandescent lights. But, um, you know, feel free to use whatever you'd like as long as you label them so everyone knows what they are. So to start off, here we have the Fresnel. Then we have the Profile. Flood. Then we have the PC. And then the Parcan. All right, great. This is pretty much. All right, great. This is pretty much it for today. So um, hopefully this makes a little bit more sense for you guys. Um, for the next one, we're gonna be talking about lighting plot. And um, yeah, stick around, and uh, I'll see you next time. Flow away.